Welcome to Green Biz Studio. I'm John Davies, Senior Vice President for Green Biz Group. And I'm welcome today with uh, Holly Alexander, Strategic Initiatives Manager for Global Sustainability at Eastman. Welcome, Holly. Thanks, John. Really glad to be here. Holly, we're here at uh, Circularity 21, and there's a lot of talk about plastics and the future of plastics, and Eastman certainly has an interest in that. So, so what are you seeing in the marketplace? It's a great question, John, and plastics are almost always one of the hot topics when circularity comes up. And as we try to create more circular business models, plastics are going to be a key part of it going forward. But we have a significant challenge, and one of the biggest issues we face today is with plastic waste. And in many cases, one of the challenges we're going to have to deal with is that we're not dealing with plastic waste alone as an issue. We're also dealing with climate change. And as we think about the climate crisis, we need to be very careful in making sure that we're not trying to move to alternatives uh, that may create more significant impact on our planet from a climate standpoint. Because quite often, one of the easiest uh, options, I think that people look at it like, well, why don't we just ban plastics? Well, unfortunately, plastics have some great benefits that make them not easy to be banned. And from that standpoint, as a company that produces plastics, we're, we're really excited about that, but we really wanna make sure that they're being used responsibly. And one of the best ways to do that and it's a little bit old, a little bit tried and true, but one of the first things we all need to do is we really need to fully embrace the three R's. We need to think about reduce, reuse, and then recycle. And recycling isn't going to be the solution to get us out of this completely if we don't also think about how we reduce our plastic use and how we figure out how to create reuse models for plastics. I think the intersection of climate change and, and the plastics issue is a really interesting one, Holly. And I think a lot of the conversations at Verge, at some of our other events, are all around technology and how they can support sustainability. So what sort of technology advancements are you seeing at Eastman that may help us with this plastics conundrum? It's a great question as well. Um, and one of the ways that we're thinking about this in particular, John, is how do we start to figure out how we can leave more of those traditional fossil fuels or hydrocarbons in the ground where they are today? And when we look at circular technologies, one of the very interesting ways we can do this is by starting to create materials and plastics from hydrocarbons that have already been used. And with that, that's where our molecular recycling technologies come into play. Um, this is a place for us to essentially take the carbons, the hydrogens and the oxygens that are already included in plastics that have been, let's say that have met the end of their useful life and be able to use those to make brand new materials and brand new plastics. So. At Eastman, we have a couple of technologies that we have launched and are commercially available and at scale today. And what these are giving us a chance to do is to take plastics and other materials and break them back down into their molecules um, and then be able to recreate brand new materials that are virtually indistinguishable from materials produced from those traditional hydrocarbon uh, fossil fuels. And without degradation over time that can happen with some other types of recycling, uh, plastics that are created through molecular recycling or advanced recycling technologies are virtually indistinguishable and they can be infinitely recycled over and over again. So one thing that's really important that goes along with this, and we've had great guidance from our leadership from the very top, is that we need to make sure that the technologies that we are introducing have a lower carbon footprint um, than the traditionally manufactured. And so based on life cycle assessments that we've done so far, our technologies uh, are ranging between 20 to 50% lower in greenhouse gas emissions for the outputs that come out of those technologies. So we're really excited about this as one of the tools to help to address the climate change in addition to the plastic waste crisis. Holly, you bring up a really good point when you talk about scale. And so how is Eastman approaching you know, scaling these types of technologies? 
Yeah, this is this is going to be one of the really exciting parts of this process. Uh, we can, of course, you know, build assets and do that. And we've made significant investments in assets that were already operating and have made commitments to build a two hundred and fifty million dollar facility uh, in Kingsport, Tennessee. And but with that, one of the challenges that we're bumping into is to really scale this. We need to have the material and the feedstocks or the recycled content to go into these technologies. And we have some limiting factors when we look at the recycling infrastructure that we have operating today. Uh, and if we think specifically about the United States, we need to make sure that recycling um, can actually that chemical recycling or molecular recycling can count as recycled content. We need to make sure that we have incentives or mandates or um, investments that would actually help to expand the types of materials that are collected and regularly recycled and the volumes of those materials because we need to start to create stable and continuous supplies of those materials coming in. And we think policymakers and regulators are going to be a key part in building the infrastructure. Um, there are a few things that we've worked on in this. And one thing that we've done is we've drafted a white paper, if folks are interested in learning a little bit more, uh, just entitled Three Ways Policymakers Can Renew the Recycling System. And it looks at these different issues in a little more context and a lot more detail. And even though it's maybe designed for policymakers, we think that there are probably some things that could be of interest to other folks. But if anybody would like to learn more, you could just go to eastman.com slash advocacy and learn a little bit more about the plastic crisis and where we think the uh, advanced recycling solutions are going to really help to create some uh, transformative change for us all. Sounds like exciting times at Eastman, Holly. Uh, so I've been talking with Holly Alexander, Strategic Initiatives Manager at Eastman. Thanks, Holly. Thanks, John.